Hey Internet, today I want to show you about a project that I'm working on which will allow me to use my CNC machine like a manual mill. Um, I've got three encoder wheels here. The first encoder wheel will be my x-axis, my y-axis, my z-axis. I'm going to set these up with large wheels on, on a cube. So my x-axis will operate like this. Uh, my y-axis will be on the side and I can turn it this way and that way and that'll feed my y-axis. And then on top of the cube, I'll have uh, my z-axis spinning here. Uh, and that's the whole point of this project. So that I can use my CNC more like a manual mill. I'll have semi-automated uh, milling modes where I can do things like um, I can set uh, a virtual stop uh, with the controller. And then I can have the milling machine go ahead and mill back and forth and do a step over, mill back and forth and do a step over. Uh, and that would save me a lot of time. Or I can do things like set, uh, I could set four uh, virtual stops and then uh, do a facing operation on a piece of material. But what I have here is, um, here I have a, a STM32. Um, and I will go through the reasons why I chose that in a moment. Uh, here I have an Arduino Uno running gerbil 1.1. Um, over here I have a OLED. Uh, this is a SSD 1306 and then um, I have these three uh, encoder wheels. Uh, these are pretty high precision. These are 600 pulse per revolution uh, encoders. I've got my three encoders. I've got a, a display and I've got um, essentially mocked up a gerbil controller. And the reason that I chose the STM32, there, there's a project uh, out there by a gentleman by the name of Simon Merritt. And, you know, he prototyped uh, uh, on Hackaday a, another Uno. I think it was an Uno. Um, it might have been a, a Pro Mini. Um, but he prototyped the ability to use that Pro Mini to sit in between gerbil and your G-code sender. And so that... Um, you could you could jog, but if you didn't want to have your laptop plugged in, you could just use the the man in the middle uh, interface to send G codes so that you could you could get your machine set up without having to have your laptop plugged into the machine. Um, now that had a couple issues. I think the main issue was the was the resources for the for the processor that you use. So number one, um, the uh, the the Uno only has uh, I believe one hardware serial interface. Um, and I also believe that the, uh, you, you can only really do um, a change pin interrupt here uh, for your uh, counting your encoder ticks. Um, the nice thing about the STM32 here is that it has, uh, it has more than two, I think it has three uh, hardware serial uh, ports, uh, but it also has four uh, hardware quadrature encoders. And so... Um, the quadrature encoder interface is quite nice. They're very high performance. This is 32-bit. Uh, this is 8-bit. Uh, I think this is running at like 72 megahertz. This is running at like 16 megahertz. So there's quite a lot more resources on this guy. Um, and the price is the same. I mean, th these are like two bucks from China. Um, and they work really, really, really well. Um, you have to flash the right bootloader on them. But once you get them flashed, they pretty much operate like an Arduino. You can use the Arduino IDE. And, uh, you know, you can do a lot more with, uh, with these STM32 devices. So, so just a really quick demo. Um, so if I turn the wheel, uh, essentially I'm going to send 0 0.01 millimeter steps. Um, and one rotation of this wheel, I think is like, uh, with the quadrature encoding, I think is, is, uh, is 1200 steps. So I can, with one full revolution of this, um, you know, I can do 1,200 steps on, uh, of, of movement. And so um, all the axes are working right now independently. There doesn't seem to be any resource issues. I had some uh, memory leaks earlier, but the memory uh, seems to be very stabilized. And then um, the next thing I can do here is, uh, apologies for the, the non-screen capture, um, but I should be able to fire up uh, my sender. In this case, this is a universal G-code sender. And uh, you'll see that down here, um, my position is going to be the same position that's down here. 
And then uh, if I wanted to use this to either send a job or do, you know, do start a job or stop a job or anything, um, I can go ahead and jog through here uh, with the normal sender commands. And those just, those just pass right through the device. The, the, uh, the position is updated on the LCD screen and uh, everything works great. Now, the thing that doesn't work great, unfortunately, I haven't really figured out yet, is that if I, uh, if I nudge this just a little bit, you'll see disaster strikes. And there's a pop-up, and unfortunately, um, this, this error box, it, it, it pops up quite a large number of these errors. Um, so it would be nice if I had some kind of a prefix that I could send to Universal G Code platform to say, hey, you know, don't parse for a little while or just a prefix that says, you know, ignore all of these commands. Um, they're not errors. And uh, I don't really know how to fix that, but um, I've submitted a bug on GitHub to, to an issue on GitHub to see if that can be uh, adjusted. But um, the next thing for this project is to uh, figure out how to map in some buttons. And um, uh, after I map in the buttons, you can see it's pretty sensitive. I just actually triggered the error again. Um, but after I map in the buttons, uh, I'll mock up the actual cube interface. Uh, and that'll have buttons for things like, um, you know, I can hold a button down and do rapid movements. Uh, I can uh, have a button that maybe sets a virtual stop and things like that. Uh, so that'll be the next step. I'm also going to experiment with using um, some different uh, rotary encoders. These are um, these are about ten bucks uh, if you order them on AliExpress or something along those lines. Um, they're not expensive, but they're not cheap. Um, you know, you can get the 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 uh, you can get smaller encoders for for much less money, and they have a smaller physical footprint. So I don't know that I'm going to need all the resolution in these encoders, and I may be able to just get away with using uh, you know a, a hundred pulse per revolution. You know, small. I think they're called ER12 encoders. They don't have a button on them, but they, they have a detent every four uh, pulses. So that'll be the next phase of this. And if you're interested in the project, let me know. Um, I'll put a link to the GitHub repository, and uh, I'd love to hear people's feedback on this concept.